lab 04 stress scheduling. Here in this lab, get and set stress priority on Windows using Windows API and create a custom task scheduler using C Sharp. And we have demonstrated both during the lecture. So in this lab, you create one thread on Windows Server using a Windows API, not necessarily Windows Server. You can do it on your Windows. So on your Windows host, for example, Windows 10, Windows Home. And show its default thread priority, change its priority to a different one, then show it again. So this is a task one. For task two, For task two, create a custom scheduler using C Sharp and show the threads for any program tasks. Please uh, attach the source code at the end of your report. And inside those steps, only put how you compile the program, how do you run the program, what result you get, and the code snippets you added or modified the whole program attached at the end of the report. And though the code snippets you did or modified, you need to put in the description of each step. And the review question is a major part, 80%. In this uh, review question, we are going to practice for scheduling algorithms. First come, first service, shortest job first. For those uh, jobs with the uh, same length, then we choose uh, first come, first service. And non preemptive priority scheduling. A larger priority number implies a higher priority and the same priority. Then we use uh, first come, first service. And around the Robin scheduling algorithm, we have discussed all these uh, scheduling algorithms during the lecture. Okay, now let's uh, create a folder to hold today's contents. Here, I create a folder called Lab04, the today's lab. Again, we are going to download all those uh, materials from the Git web hub, uh, GitHub website. So you press your shift key, right click. Oh, you don't need to press your shift key, just right click, you will get this uh, Git bash here. Then type Git pull. Any updates that will be pulled down to a local machine. So we go to labs, lab04, and the code. Then we copy all the codes, CS and win, control C, copy it. Here, this is QR answers, the reveal questions, uh, reference answers. So after you have done your reveal questions, you may compare your results with this uh, reference solution. So now I go to the folder I created today, paste it here, control V. So for task one, the Windows API program. Again, we open this uh, Visual Studio developer command prompt. Here, copy this folder, control C. Come here, type cd, m space, right click, press enter. The DLR, you see there are two subfolders, CS and Win, here. So you can uh, put this one aside. 
Now we use CD. Go to the Win Fold subfolder. There are again. You see this uh, Win Priority dot C here. Win Priority dot C. Right. And uh, as we have discussed, you can use this way. Right click this layer zero four. Open with code. Now go to this Win Win Priority. Here are the references uh, used. So please uh, open these references. So you can learn more from these uh, online resources. Here, the set thread probability function, how to use it, and the syntax parameters, lots of discussion here we have discussed during the lecture. Okay, we come back here. Now, in this uh, lab, we are asked to uh, Show its default thread priority, change its priority to a different one, and then show it again. So you may choose a priority, thread priority from this uh, online web page. So the first one to do get and print out the default priority. Right, the first one. Then go through this uh, code. You see how to display thread priority. We can copy this code and use it. Can you see? Come here to the to do. Can you we paste here? We can see. Uh, we can modify this one. Let's say I'm going to uh, get the default priority. Get the default priority right. then you use this get thread, thread priority to get this current thread priority and you can print here the default thread priority is so just write it like this as we have discussed in the lecture, here it shows as an unsigned number. It will be different from the values listed here. Since it's encoded with the tools complement, so we can modify, we can add one more sentence. Can we can we see? Can we paste here? We use a percent D, right? Percent D will show a signed number. So this is how to get and print the default probability when we just start the program. Now we are going to change its uh, probability. So we choose a different one. This is thread mode background begin. As we have discussed during the lecture, it's uh, paired with it's paired with the thread mode background end here paired with this one. Thread mode, background end. So we can uh, change this one to uh, another one. It's okay if you want to use this one. Run in background. Then you print back to the foreground. Here. And. Uh, is it okay you use this default one? Now, what I want to uh, change is we want to uh, print out as signed values. So we just control C, control V, and change this one to percent D. Remove that 0x. We know 0x is the preceding, the prefix for hex numbers. Okay, this is I'm going to change 
the probability and show the new thread probability. Actually, here is not change. Change is here, right? Change is here. So, here is actually to get the new probability. Is what they show up here. So we can uh, control X, cut this sentence, and put it here. Here is a set thread probability. So can we paste it here? Here is the place I'm going to change the priority. So for other priority values, you may choose from this uh, list. You are encouraged to try several of these uh, priority values as a practice, even though it's not required. But if you want to learn more, it's better to uh, practice more. Okay, now we, I think we complete this stuff, right? Show its default thread priority, change its priority to a different one, then show it again. So in your report, take a screenshot about the place you modified or added, and add an explanation what you are going to do in this part. Here in this part, we are going to get and display the default priority. In this part, we are going to change the priority. In this part, we are going to get and show the new thread priority. So take a screenshot and add an explanation. This is the first part, the code part, and uh, attach the whole, all the code at the end of your report. Now the we are going to uh, compare and run it, so you need to Take a screenshot about, about this uh, compiling and running and the results. We use CL, compare, MD means multi thread, by default it will be used. And win priority.c. And you see uh, it's done, and you also see two files are generated under that folder. There are confirmation. Right? This is your completion, and uh, you need to also show the result of your completion here. Now we are going to run it. Win priority. Press under here. You see the results. This part to get the default priority, and the default priority is. 0x0. Zero zero. So what this it is? This is uh, a default thread probability. Hex number and uh, decimal number. 0, you check this part, add your explanation. What 0 means? 0 is thread probability normal by default. Now, I'm going to change the priority and you see what this priority is. Negative 4. Negative 4, you come here. We didn't see the negative 4 in this list, right? The negative 4 is not in this list, but it's, uh, there are some explanation here, negative 4. But this one is for real time priority class, as we discussed during the lecture. Currently, we use the normal priority class, not this uh, real time priority class. And we know this one is the one we set, is this one thread mode, background, begin. But uh, we didn't uh, see anything here. How could we find any uh, documentations? We can copy this one. Control C. Come here. Google it. What 
does this one calls so you can have a look and also go to Microsoft website to read the related web pages so you can go through this uh, article to have a look by yourself so this is a uh, task one. Now for task two. Task one we've already completed here. Right? This is task one. Now for task two we cd to that CS C means C shop. That there are you see this CS scheduler dot CS. So in your Visual Studio Code open this uh, CS scheduler the code is uh, got from this uh, link okay have a look here in this example it creates a custom task scheduler that limits the number of threads used by the app and it then launches two sets of tasks and displays information about the task and the thread on which the task is executed. So to learn more please go through this article. There are lots of explanation. Here I just demonstrate Actually, currently you all know how to compare and run it. So let's just do it directly. Here, go through this program. You can read through, follow these uh, comments. Here you can see we have two uh, threads. And the tasks, the first set of tasks, use a factory to run a set of tasks. Here's the first set of tasks. Tasks here, the second set of tasks, and here the output will be shown like this. And though the the cust customized scheduler here is this one, this task scheduler, it uh, ensures the maximum concurrency level while running on top of the thread pool. So they are all ex explained, so you may go through the code by yourself. For any uh, functions, classes, methods you don't know, you can Google it or find it just on Microsoft MSDN website. The result will be looks like this. We have demonstrated this uh, during the lecture. We use CSC to compare this uh, CS, scheduler.cs. Here you see a new program is generated that exe. Always use DIR for confirmation because you need to take screenshot. Say this is your result after you compare it. Here, this is your completion and this is the result of your completion. Now you execute this program. And you see the output. Successful completion. This one is uh, done in this task. T1, the first set. Task 4 on thread 3. So you may take just a snippet of this output to put in in your report. So maybe it's better to start from this place. Uh, take a take a portion of this output. Oh, this is the task two. Now we are going to do the major part. The review questions. In this review question, consider 
the following set of processes with the length of CPU burst given in milliseconds. We know the CPU burst time is a run time. This is a probability. And uh, all the processes are assumed to have arrived in this order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or at time 0, which means they are all inside the bank as a metaphor we discussed during the lecture. Use the following scheduling algorithm, these four, to answer these questions. First, draw four Gantt charts that illustrate the execution of these processes. So for each algorithm, you draw one Gantt chart. So totally we have four algorithms. We need to draw four Gantt charts. A good way to draw these Gantt charts is use your word and uh, you can also use your word to create tables to hold these results or these results uh, I will show you here I use a uh, libro office uh, writer so it's similar to Microsoft uh, Word right? it looks like a word now how do we draw this Gantt chart First, let's draw the Gantt chart for this FCFS. So totally, we have so many uh, times need to run all these processes. So you can add all these numbers together. You can see totally we need uh, 20 time units, right? Here, 2 plus 8 is 10, 1, 4, 5 is 10, totally 20 uh, time units. So you can draw a table. We have a uh, file threads, file processes. So we need a headline, so we need a six row, and uh, how many columns do we need? So more options. The row, we need six row, and the column, column, we, we need a, uh, uh, let's add more 25. and uh, use some clear so this one looks uh, good simple uh, grid column some grid row let's use this one grid row insert Here we can add a time unit, right? TO time unit. And in this uh, column, we type those processes P1, P2. P3, P4, P5. Now the time unit, 1, 2, 3, Then you can uh, copy this one. Use this number as time scales. So the first can chart. is first come first service right what are the four algorithms the first one is a uh, first come first service so you need to uh, section add section numbers and a section titles follow the report template clearly FC FS here as a simple demonstration uh, we are not Add section numbers and sections here. There's a Gantt chart for FCFS. 
So they all come at the same time. First come, first serve. So P1 is the first one. Right? P1 is the first one. We can use uh, all means run. Let's use a uh, capital letter. P1, first time is 2. Now P1 is done. The next one is P2. P2 is one time unit. Then third one, P3. P3 is uh, eight time units, right? P3, after P2 is done, is P3's turn. P3 is eight time units. P3 is done, is eight time units. This uh, P3. Now P5, after, or P4. P4 is uh, first time is a 4. Our P3 is done, is P4. We can just copy and paste. And see, can we? P4 is a 4 time unit. Then P5 is a 5 time unit. Okay, this is a Gantt chart. So if you want to make the clear, you you can add some color. For example, P1, you use one color, and P2, use another color, and so on. So this is the Gantt chart for the first come, first service. Can you see? And we now the next one is a short job first. SJF for SJF, which one is the shortest one? P1 is the shortest one. So P1 will be done first. Oh, P2. P2 is the shortest one, right? P2 is the shortest one, so P1, P2 is down first. The next one is P1. Then, the third one is P4. The fourth one is P5. Then the longest one is P3. Okay, we need to uh, remove all this thing. One unit left. Oops. P1, then P4. I want to drag it here. Why it all disappeared? So this is quite weird. P4, P4, we have uh, 4. Then is P5. Oops. That is the shortest job first. One time unit, two time unit, four time unit, five time unit, eight time units. Let's show the job first. 
then is the non-preemptive priority. So we can uh, copy this one. Oops. Paste here. We rename it. This one is a non-preemptive probability. Right, now we need to schedule these uh, processes based on their probability. And the probability it says a larger probability number implies a higher probability, which means that we will be scheduled first. And the highest one is this P3. So the highest one is P3. It will be uh, scheduled first. The next one is a P file. P file after P3 is done is P file. Then we have two P1 and P4 have the same probability. For same probability, we use first come first service. So P1 is in front of P4. So P1 will be scheduled next. So come here. Then it's uh, P4. The last one is P3. Oh, sorry. The last one is P2. Right? P2, P2 it has probability 1, P2, so you may need to double check the schedule, P3, probability 4 first, next P5, probability 3, and then we have probability 2, is P1 first, P4, here P4, next here P4, probability two. The last one is uh, P2, is probability is one, the lowest. So this is a non preemptive probability scheduling. The last one is uh, round robin. So we can copy this whole stuff. On the robin, you just type RR. Now, as we discussed, round robin is first is based on the order first come, first service, and each one takes the quantum in turn, right? A quantum is just two time units. So, the first one is a P1 and they, they need only two time units so it's done. The next one is P2 and P2 it uh, needs only a one time unit so which means P2 didn't use up its uh, quantum and it uh, will yield the CPU after it's done so we'll come to the third one P3 So P3, we'll start from here, and we, but it only uh, can run two time units, then it's a P4's turn. So P4, P4's turn, come here, then it's a P5's turn, each one just run two time units, Connect X, and we, come here. Now, 
We know P1, P2 is done, but P3, P4, P5, they still have remaining time units. So here P5 used its uh, quantum. We will come back to P3. Then P4. Then P5. Now you see P4 is done. Only P3 and uh, P5 they still have many uh, job need to complete. So control X. Now come to uh, P5 here. We know it's P3 it still has uh, the many. Uh, job and p file still have one remaining uh, time unit then p file is done on p3 so p3 can continue after p file is done so you can each one take at most uh, two time units because the quantum is two here or well, the time slice is two Now we can recheck the result, double check the result. P1, two time units, then P2 is one time units, then P3, P3 is eight time units here. But one quantum is just two time units. Then P4, P4 is four time units, one quantum is two. Then P5 is uh, five time units. After P5 used its uh, quantum, we need to continue the scheduling, right? Continue scheduling only we still have P3, P4, P5, they are all inside the bank. So P3, then P4, then P5, then again P3. Now P4 is already done, then P5 and P3. So did the uh, Ronald Robin scheduling Gantt chart. And uh, this empty cell means they need to wait, right? They are all inside the bank. They need to wait. So here, the wait time for this P4. How many cells? Now we complete all the Gantt chart, and the Gantt chart, the correctness of your Gantt chart will determine the correctness of the left three equations. So you need you'd better double check this uh, Gantt chart. Okay, now we are going to uh, do this uh, left uh, four questions. Question two, what's the turnaround time of each process for each of the scheduling algorithm? You need to uh, create a table. Create a table like this. We have uh, File process, we need a headline, so we need a six row. And it asks for the turn around time. So only turn around time. We need a, so we, I think we need a three rows, one row for calculation. You need to share your calculation. Otherwise, you will have uh, marks be deducted. So we can draw it like this. The so question uh, two. So you need to uh, label and uh, section your solution clearly. Here I just, uh, for convenience, type I here. Please uh, pay attention. This does not satisfy the report format. Turn around time for each process. Turn uh, around the time for each process of oh, this uh, algorithm, let's say first come, first service. The first column is the process. 
The second column is your calculation. The last uh, column is your result. Result for your turnaround time. Turnaround time. So we have uh, P1, P2. So maybe we just copy and paste. Right, now for the calculation, for convenience, I would like to copy this table and uh, put them together here. I copy this table. The Gantt chart. Put it together to calculate it. Here, for example, P1. From this Gantt chart, you can see P1's wait, waiting time is zero and it turn around time here from arriving until completion. It would be two time units, right? The calculation you can find a wait time plus burst time. So the wait time for P1 is zero, the burst time is two, so the turn around time is two. Now for P2, for P2 you see its wait time is two time units, so wait time is two, and its burst time is one, so turn around time is three. And for this uh, P3, you see its wait time is three. Right? It's with this Gantt chart, you can write the result quite quickly. And its burst time is eight, so the turn around time is 11. And for P4, for P4, how many uh, empty uh, cells here? It will be 11. 11 and plus its burst time is 4, so it's 15. And for the last one, P5, its wait time is this part, and its burst time is 5. So here would be 15 plus fail. So it's 20. Turn around time is 20. You may notice something here. For example, this is turn around time is 2, then P2's wait time is 2. This turn around time is 3, then P4 is uh, P3's wait time is 3. Here 11, here 11, here 15, here 15. And get done it. So this is the first come, first service turnaround time for each process. You need to show this calculation. Now similarly, you need to complete uh, the turnaround time for all other three scheduling algorithms like this. So I will not show it here. Now, what's the waiting time OG process for each of these scheduling algorithm? You want to see how to find the waiting time. But this is for the first come first service. I will only demonstrate one for you. For example, this round robin to find the waiting time. Can you see? I demonstrate only one. So this is uh, III. Again, you need to. Uh, Label your report clearly. The waiting time. I demonstrate this one. For the other three scheduling algorithm, you need to put in your report. Here, I want only to demonstrate this RR and copy this table.
there's a waiting time. Now this time we only need to find the waiting time. Here, wait time. Now please use your full word waiting time to make it uh, make your report more readable. Or you use a result, something like that. Now for the waiting time of P1, we can see clearly the waiting time is zero. For waiting time of P2, clearly the waiting time is two. For waiting time of P3, now for waiting time of P3, you need to add this uh, waiting time together. First is three plus, next is four, right here. Wait a four time units, then wait another four time units. Plus four again, then plus here one time units. Plus one. So totally we have 12, right? 12 time units. Now for P4, for P4, here is the weight file, here file time units. Then wait four time units, then it's done. So before it wait nine time units. For P file, it waits here. Seven time unit plus here four time unit and another two time units. So, P5's waiting time is uh, 13 time units. So you need to follow this demo to find the waiting time for all other algorithms. Now the last question, which of the algorithms result in the minimum average waiting time over all processes? So the average when time over all processes, you need to find the average when time for each algorithm, then find that that algorithm with the minimum average when time. Here I just calculate the average when time for the example I just demonstrated for this round robin. What's the average waiting time? It's clear the average waiting time, so you need to uh, type I I I observe this uh, fourth one, right? The fourth question. Again, this format you need to make the uh, clearer. The one I demonstrated here, it does not satisfy the requirement. So find all the waiting time. We need to find the minimum average waiting time and the average. First, you need to find all the average waiting time. Then you can compare them and find the minimum one. Right? For example, this round robin, its average waiting time is you sum this up and divide by file. Totally, we have file processes. Its average waiting time. Equals here you times zero plus two plus twelve plus nine plus thirteen divide by five. This is the waiting time, average waiting time of this round robin algorithm. You need to find the average waiting time of the other three scheduling algorithm. Again, I suggest you use Python as a advanced calculator. You will just paste here, you will get your result. Oops, that is indent. Um, there, no indent, so please make sure there is no indent. So it's uh, 7.2. So the wait time for this one is 7.2 for this one robin. Oops. For others, you need to find by yourself. For example, here we can uh, 
After you are done, you can compare yours with this uh, reference result. Here, for example, the Gantt chart for each one. You are suggested to use this format. This is a clear one. If you use something like this, it's hard for you to calculate the waiting time. Now for question two, question two we are asked to find the turn around time, right? And check the round robin. And compare the turn around time of the round robin. Here, this column compare with this column round robin two, three. Now we, we have mistakes round robin. Two, three, here is twenty. 13, 18, but you see I, I made mistakes. Now, the mistake comes from the Gantt chart. So we can check our Gantt chart again here. Right? You ch ch check the Gantt chart. They look similar. Right? They look similar. So what's the mistake I made here? Question to ask we find the turn around time. Here this is a turn around time. We need a uh, oops, sorry, M my bad. This turn around time is for this FCFS. So for FCFS here, this column, FCFS 2, 3, 11, 15, 20. So it's right. For this column, there's the turn around time. I demonstrate one example. For the waiting time, I demonstrate the round robin. So this is the waiting time. For the round robin, the waiting time, you compare this uh, last column with this column. 0, 2, 12, 9, 13. So that is right. Now the average time, round robin, 7.2. It's right, round robin. So you need to demonstrate your calculation processes to find the average waiting time for others three scheduling algorithms and based on the result you will see this short job first it has the minimum right? based on this result it has the minimum average waiting time